It's time for the End of Conversation podcast with funny man Damian Lemon and the voice of your choice, Ali Muhammad. Yes, yes, y'all. You don't stop. Calm sense, y'all. Keep on. Woo-wee. One, two, one, two. This is Damian Lemon. This is Ali Muhammad. And this is In the Conversation the podcast. Ah, we are back. Live in your ear hole. Mm-hmm. Thank you for listening. Thank Word you for up. subscribing. If you haven't pressed that button, matter of fact, tweet a friend. Be like, yo, the conversation dropped. We need that. <laughs> anyway. Word up. How you been, man? Hot than a motherfucker, man. Yeah. It's <laughs> oppressive. It's sweltering heat outside. How was your hypothalamus? Were y'all having that conversation or what? He was like, man, I advise you not to go outside. Ooh, that's <laughs> why, smart. why don't you just chill right here? You know what I'm saying? Catch up on the snowfall. And, you know what I mean? I, yo, I totally, <laughs> I'm behind on snowfall. I can't wait. I've been meaning to get the little time to sit down with it. I know I'm a week behind, so don't I, please I, don't hit me. I, I, wish, I wish I had the uh, patience to just wait to binge it. Okay. Cause that, you know what I'm saying, I want. Oh you know yeah, saying? cause it's, yeah. You know, it's in that slow. It's in the slow start. Right. Now, you know what I'm saying. Exposition so, time. Yeah, yeah. It's all set up and shit. So yeah, you know, like Netflix got your mind used to just being able to push through right. and get to it, yeah. as opposed to waiting to next week, right? Into next week, into next week. Okay. Yeah. So I wish I had the patience just to say, you know, I'm gonna just wait. Yeah. But I don't. Nosy. Yeah. Nah. No, hey. <laughs> I hate. I missed it. I totally forgot. I'm not in the groove of when it, oh, right, Wednesday. So mm-hmm. I totally missed it, and I realized that I'm about to double back. I like some of those shows, though, where it's like appointment viewing, where you like it still becomes a night. I do. Know? I do like those. But in this particular case, you know what I'm saying, with Snowfall, I want to see it all. You want to fast forward a little yeah, bit. Wanna, not fast forward. I don't want to fast forward. I just want to be able to. Mm-hmm. Keep keep you know what I'm saying stay into that into that story, okay. you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So I you know appointment viewing you in the story, then you bounce out, then you go do some other shit, then mm-hmm. it's kind of over until like oh shit I forgot to watch on um, Snowfall. Now you go watch it again, like what happened? You know what I'm saying catch up a little bit, then go through it. So I just I just feel like once I'm inside of that story, it's so you know what I mean to me it's it's such a good story, it's a native story that. I want to stay inside of it mm-hmm. for a while. You want to lock in. Yeah. I dig it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, when, when Thrones was coming on, mm-hmm. it was appointment viewing. We watched it on mm-hmm. the Sunday. And, you know, it's enough in that world. Where, you know, it's so it's futuristic and fantasy. So, you know, you in it. You're like, okay, that was cool. Now you got to think about what you just saw and, then, you know, put it together mm-hmm. with – with Snowfall, it's like you already know these people. You right. know what I'm saying? Jerome, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. His uncle is your cousin. And you know right. what I'm saying? Right. So you already know these people. You don't have to think about it. It's like, okay, we in this world. I know this world. You can kick it a little longer. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I got to check it. I missed the second episode. I'm going to get back to that. I was watching this week, and I was, um, I was binging somewhat. I didn't get all the way through it, but I was Comedians of Cause. Mm-hmm. The latest one came out. With Eddie Murphy on there. Oh, word. And uh, that shit was official. It was first. It was uh, Eddie and Seinfeld, mm-hmm. you know, having that good talk. It was good shit. But basically, the uh, what it did spark, and it feels like this whole thing has been kind of manipulated because it feels very timed just right. I don't know if you've been seeing, like, a lot of memes. I haven't seen anything from Netflix officially, but there's a lot of memes talking about Netflix has supposedly offered Eddie Murphy seventy million right. to do a comeback special, right. which is what they kind of talk about in the conversation with Seinfeld right. and Eddie. I meant to tell you to check that shit out because it's a, it's a good one. Right. I mean, at this point, it's such a it's a show. It's I mean, it's been they've been treating com- comedians and cars like a show for a long time. But yeah, it, it's a show. It came with marketing, so I can only imagine how you know savvy they are now with it. But go ahead. What you mean? What you mean? Came along? What you talk about? The first, the first season of in the car in, in cars with um, comedians in cars mm-hmm. was sponsored by Acura, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which you know it had to lead in Acura ad. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know what like saying? it was so, integrated marketing. Yeah, it was integrated with, marketing yeah. from the jump, right? You know what I'm saying? And the the budgets on it is like real TV budget, so right. You know what I'm saying? It don't surprise 
that you know they're now timing it out with yeah. the publicist schedule. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? You got fly in here. Hold Roll on, out. <laughs> this is real life shit. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, it was good. I guess yeah. So yeah, they are ripe for a lot of marketing. They talking about money. I just felt like. The rollout was interesting. Like, mm -hmm. uh, just immediately these memes come up. But again, like it didn't feel it didn't feel anything come from anybody that was or that I saw officially Netflix. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think I'm not even sure if Eddie Murphy's really on social media like that. So I didn't see him do it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it sparked the conversation. Uh, should Eddie come back? And does what's the upside in coming back for Eddie? Is it? And I wish I, I wish you saw this shit because he talks a lot about it. So he, he you know, he he's aware mm -hmm. of the expectations and even aware of what it would take to 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 make that comeback. Right. But in your, I mean, just in your heart of hearts, one, if Eddie come back. Do you think Eddie could be Eddie, or do you think that your expectations, and and not specifically you, but yeah, you, specifically you, because we mm -hmm. talking, but your expectations of what you want or think you, you know what I mean? Because Eddie was the man, Eddie's retired, his jersey is in the rafters, right. you know what I mean? But he's been gone for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. For him Stand to- up. From stand up, right? Supposedly, and you know, a lot of people are like he been going longer than he's been doing it, right? What do you think if he came back? Where do you what you think? You think it's well? I'm. I think if he comes back, right? You know what I'm saying? I think he's been talking about it for a minute. This right. conversation about Netflix has been happening since at least the Chris Tucker Netflix special. Chris Tucker or Chris Rock? Chris Tucker. Okay. You know what I'm saying? When Chris when Chris Rock got his first, you know, Chappelle, Rock, Rock, then Chris Tucker got his. Okay. And then it was that's when I first started hearing the conversation about Eddie. Okay. Not necessarily that it was a real thing. It was just people talking about mm -hmm. it. Maybe they talked it up. Um, I'm sure he understands the expectations. I'm sure he's tapped put his toe in the water and did a couple of sets. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't he, think so. You don't think he did nothing? No, not yet. I mean, if yeah, he I, has, I, 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 don't, I think I, he's about to, he needs to, he's gonna have to do if, a lot of that. If if he hasn't, I don't think he'll do it. Yeah, well see, that's the thing. That's the that's the argument. So that the argument, a lot of people were like, um, we got into a crazy, shout out to The Stand. I did uh, a couple shows, The Stand this Saturday. The Stand just reopened. They got a brand new spot on 16th Street between Park and Irvin. And the shit is amazing. Like it looked like a damn near, like a comedy hotel. Like it's some real high end. It's fly, y'all check it out. Anyway, so it was the first weekend. So we were there and uh, there's a few people at the table. I know Sam J was at the table. She's a comedian. Uh, who else was it? I think maybe Chloe Hilliard, Yamanique. I'm not sure if they were in on this conversation. Sherrod Smalls, my man Petey Diabro, we, the, the, all of us, we were just having this conversation about the Eddie Murphy shit because that, mm -hmm. you know, Eddie is the GOAT. You know what right. I mean? So, like, even the rumble of, uh-oh, he might come back. So Sam's argument was, it's going to be some bullshit. There's no reason. I want to, well, let me not, let me not, let me not go too hard on her take, but her shit was like, niggas need to stop wanting Eddie Murphy to come back because it's not going to happen. <laughs> and it's not going to happen the way that you want it to come back. Where mm -hmm. did you want it to come back? Now, at that moment, she had to see the comedians and car shit. Right. So I was like, yo, make sure you watch that shit. You know what I mean? Because her thought was, he going to try to come back without, you know, doing the clubs I and mean, working I know that it, shit you out. You know better than that. But- Based on what you saw in the mm -hmm. comedians and cars, what is he saying? How is he feeling? He know. He knows. He knows. Like this is the thing. What's interesting about Eddie Murphy is one: so many comedians are so struck by the fact that he seems or appears to be so content with his legacy. Like mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, I, that shit was 
years ago. Yes, yeah, I was very good at that. I was probably one of the best. You know what I mean? But I'm fine. I could do these other movies. You I'm know, I got richer than a I'm rich as fuck. <laughs> I'm one of the first rich motherfuckers. I ain't got to do shit but stay black and die. I'm good. He said that. He said, yo, my favorite thing to do is nothing. That's one of my, my favorite things. I don't watch the news. I unplug. I chill. You know what I mean? I'm with my family. You know what I mean? So he's comfortably disconnected, right? But at the same time, so many comedians, you know, they, they fuck with him. They love him. They want him to come back. And it's just, again, like I said, I think a lot of comedians are struck by the fact that he don't got that itch. To at least want to get on stage or whatever. So supposedly he was telling a story like Don Rickles seen him maybe a couple months before Don Rickles died. Now Don Rickles was an OG OG. So he's, and even hey, he was like, yo, you got to come back. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you got to do, you got to come back. And he's like, there's the desire, the desire is still there. You know what I mean? Like all these these comedians that come in contact with him, you know, whether it's Chappelle or Rock, they always say, yo, he's still funniest in the room, that type of shit. Mm -hmm. He's like, yo, he know, you know, there's that first, those first few shows when you working out in the club, Eddie Murphy, you come up and mm -hmm. it's like, is you going to be funny? And then <laughs> can you deal with not, you know what I mean? Right. Being rusty, you know what I'm saying? Having to build your shit back, having to deal with expectations of people or having to deal with people saying, nah, he ain't, that ain't him. Jordan right. from the Wizards type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you got to at least do probably like a year to get your, your whole shit right, you know what I mean? Get your transmission moving, back right. to wear out, don't rust out. Right. Ed might be rusty, right. you know what I mean? Right, right, but right. he's still Ed, everybody want it. Yeah, and but he understand that, so uh, then we were like, you know, we got into the whole speculation, what if, right? So if it's a 70 million, even though I think it's just for one special, because I think he deserves that, if not more, for one special, because mm -hmm. it's legacy, you buying the legacy, right? But then we were like, yo, what if they did like a doc right before the special based on like, why am I even doing this shit? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because that's even funny. That's interesting in the way like, you did the upside. Ain't too much of an upside. Because if, you know what I'm saying? But uh, long story short, I would love to see another Eddie Murphy uh, special. I don't think it would be whack. I would. I think that shit would be different as fuck. What I did, what struck me the most in the comedians and cars shit with Eddie, and particularly Eddie and Seinfeld, those are two comics I always rocked with, right? But I always felt like those two comics, they weren't the most vulnerable comics. Like, they was a little bit more... You know, alpha dog, like posturing, yeah, you know what I mean? Jokes joke, was on everybody else. Yeah, jokes was never on them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ha ha, that's, you know what I mean? Like, they was the cool motherfuckers. But now they older, you know what I mean? You see it, they, they look like older cats, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> I want to hear what a, a older Eddie, but what he talking about? What You know, he got 10 yeah, some odd kids or something. But that's that's the point of right why he might not do it. You know what I'm saying? Right, but I was like, I was like, well, that could be his 444. And somebody was like, that could be his Kingdom Come. Right. Even I though mean, I think Kingdom Come is way better than people give it credit for. And then Jay Z never really rusted out. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he stayed true. He stayed in the mix. You know what I mean? So it's like with Eddie, he just kind of left it behind. He grew. He grew out of it. You know what I'm saying? Money. You know what I'm saying? For him to do it now, he knows how good it has to be. It's Dre making an album. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's it's like what's what detox. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's right. so much on it. Right. You know, he put in a whole lot of work to try to get it to where it is, but it's just it's technolog technologically advanced, uh -huh. but not current and disconnected. Like the Compton album. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Shit sounded beautiful. Right. Sounds. <laughs> yeah. But the music and it, it didn't connect. It did not connect with any audiences. It was it was what it was. But at least he tried. He, that's, that probably was a feat just to get him to right. do Right, and that probably <laughs> was a little low-key detox. Right. Few, right? Like, you know what, hey, wait, 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 wait. Don't, you know, call that shit Compton. Call it Compton, just backspace, backspace, backspace. Call that shit Compton. We'll see how this does. So, you know what I mean? Do you, you really had to have that itch to do it. You really had to say, you know right. what, that's my shit. I'm gonna do that shit. 
Eddie took on the whole Hollywood lifestyle, you know, and ran with it. He ain't never fall off. He's always, when you the benefit of, you already got it. You already got it. You're a living legend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're a living legend. No reason. They just wait their whole lives to die and hopefully become a legend. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully they get to look at their Instagram comments and find out, oh, we, I, I achieved it. Or, nah, niggas. <laughs> Niggas didn't fuck with me. Like, like, you know, when you but, get to the gate, they give you a little Wi-Fi right quick. Right. <laughs> you see what yeah, the people yeah, say. what the people saying about you down there. Woo! <laughs> got a three out of five. That's not the best. But anyway, he's a living legend. So for him to, to leverage that legacy, I would love I, to see it. It ain't no lose either way. Even he can't if, lose. Yeah, if, even if he come out and that shit bomb, and, you know, he just laughs the shit off and it goes away right quick. They'll talk about it for two days. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He might it might be some memes that live forever, but mm-hmm. you know, it ain't gonna kill him, it ain't gonna hurt him. But he don't need the money. Yeah, I feel like he gotta get I least, think he might wanna do it though. I think he I think he wanna do it too. I think it's everything is I think these things are, you know, deliberate. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. things are moving and shaking. I, I sound crazy because I ain't got not one million, but I feel like he should crack four hundred million. Say, yo, let me get a money. If you got if you got seventy from me. This my legacy. Let yeah, me get a cool what, hundo. What the tap out is on? What's the tap out? What you mean? On on comedy specials, like you know what I mean? This would be the tap. Was, this would be the Dave Chappelle the tap out as far as what the money can stand versus how many people gonna watch it. I don't know. Does Eddie? This is the same questions you ask with, ask with Monique. Does he still? You know what I'm saying? Draw the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we might be into it. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Players from the 80s and 90s. Right. You know what I'm saying? But these new kids' movies ain't doing as well as they used to. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He might not be as relevant. He the old guy in Hollywood. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's also, you know, like, it's a good... 70 million is a beautiful number as well. But, you know, like, I'm just thinking the press conference numbers. Yeah, 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 definitely. 100 million Eddie Murphy legacy. That's what we call this bitch what, too, what, legacy. What they gave that. Beyonce for the for the homecoming? Sixty? I don't know. Something like that. Sixty what? million. Well, that was a cut. Was a package though, right? I don't know. I don't know, but I think. It, but uh, you know what I'm saying? That's see, as relevant as relevant gets in this day and age. True indeed. True indeed. Yeah, that's. The, yes, he he is worth it on a on the legacy. The style, you know yeah, the legacy. Yeah, the legacy, legacy is there, but it, are the people there to to kind of hold that legacy I think so. up? I All think right. so, but I could be wrong. I mean, shit. I don't, you know, who? If the people are there for Space Jam 2, the people are there for that. I mean, okay. That's a lot of. <laughs> I don't think the people are there for Space Jam 2, so maybe that was wrong. I mean, it's, it's a lot of both for that. I mean, you got a lot of relevancy in Space Jam 2, and you got a lot of people that's, you know what I'm saying, very nostalgic that, that say they're not going to watch that shit, yeah. but, you know, people always lie. Yeah, people always say some shit, and that shit be number one. We're like, how the fuck they got number one? Everybody hate that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. We'll see. But you know, speaking of which, on Space Jam. Oh shit. No, no, no. It's not. That's a shit. mean it's a, uh, transition. No, it, no it's a, I don't even know if it's a transition. Speaking of which. But since we talk about it, you know what I'm saying? It. You know, they replaced old Terrence Nance since I talked about oh, it last week. Damn. And I, I don't Did know. Did you jinx him? I, nah, no, it happened. It had happened before I said oh, okay. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I got off the mic, when I got off the mic, I saw it on my oh, phone. Oh, like, okay. Oh. okay. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, I guess they parted ways creative, creatively. Wow. Uh, Malcolm D. Lee is taking over. All right. Shout out to Malcolm D. Lee. Shout out to Malcolm D. Lee. You know what I'm saying? You know, he does his thing. I will say, no slight against Malcolm D. Lee, but. When like with the Terrence Nance shit, it felt like it might be something like wild and crazy. You right. know what I mean? A little bit more daring. Right. You know, definitely, um, definitely. I mean, that's I all mean, you know. But see, again, that's that's what make it good for somebody like Malcolm. Malcolm know Hollywood politics. He been right. around. He had enough. He just had Girls Trip as a as a nice little hit. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? I didn't realize so that. you know, but he he also has that that um you know. Broad, real, realness, real expectations towards what Hollywood is. You know what I'm saying? Because he's used to it. Because he went, he made some hits. Right. Then he went away for a while. Then he came back, made some more hits. Mm-hmm. So in that hiatus, you get to see like, well, damn, I'm popping. Like, why I'm not? You know what I'm saying? Right. Getting these looks. You know what I mean? So I think he could come in. He just did a deal. I think at Universal, like a production deal. So. Mm-hmm. I think he comes at it from a perspective of, 
okay, let me get this shit to the finish line. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what, you know, in Hollywood, you're talking about a $100 million movie. Right. You know what I'm saying? You They took a chance on Terrence, which would have been a dope situation. You know what I'm saying? It probably still has some of his DNA on it. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure this shit get to the finish line. Right. The pressure's up. Everybody on the internet talk about this shit either way. You know what I'm saying? Debating that shit. Right. Who's the best? Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nas. You know right. what I'm saying? With Jordan and LeBron and shit. Having that conversation. So it's a lot of... It's a lot of um, pressure on it, mm-hmm. and well, we'll see. you need somebody in the seat that you know can kind of deal with both sides—the creative side plus the pressure and the politics. Yeah, so see. I think you know what I'm saying I think that's why I was, and plus he's black. So I guess LeBron didn't want to keep it a black director. If that's we're gonna dope. get a black director that we don't have to take a chance on, a little bit more proven. Yeah, a little more proven. Just had a hit. All right, let's not even it. a little bit more proven. More proven. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Got more, you know what I'm saying? More hits in the coffers. Right. You know in the mean? coffers. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Shit, the coffers. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. Oh, uh, yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, coffers. <laughs> it's one of those words I know in the world. And I've seen it written and shit, but I've never really. <laughs> I've never uh, looked it up. I feel like I know what it means just right. by context, yeah, 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 but I could be wrong. But you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I don't be knowing what the shit mean either. Yeah. I just I just know How it feel, feel right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I, I say a word out my mouth that I ain't really ever really use. Right. And it be like, what the fuck? Let me look this shit up. Yeah. Man. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, that's right. You know, got it. <laughs> Vaguely, but you know, Fair it works. It Fair works. enough, it's in. That shit come from my, my pops. Yeah. My pops love a good random word that mm-hmm. you ain't supposed to really say every day. Yeah. And he like to pull it out at the most, you know, opportune moments. Right. Especially when a motherfucker trying them or something. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Discounting them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You like to whoop them with a whoop, 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 and motherfucker. Then, and drop a drop a, a you know what I'm saying a abstract word on your ass. Hit them with a what? Give me one. All right, hey, listen, man. Uh, they always random. They ain't never the okay. same. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, it, you know, it's it's just it's not a um it's not a, a science to it. It's an art. You right. Know, just throwing them shits. Right. Them shits just. <laughs> I saw somebody. Shout out to Dallas Penn. Follow him on. You know, the gram or a bunch of little shit. And uh, somebody said something to him. He said some type of take. Somebody said something to him. He was about, it was basically about some sneaker shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, people be highly opinionated about sneaker shit. But then the guy right. was like, ah, I, would, I would argue with you, but you, you're quite obtuse. <laughs> 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 so, obtuse? Yeah. yeah <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> obtuse just sound, it just sound offensive. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, where are they? Like, go angrily def- actually, look that up. I actually used that word yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Talking about an angle that I wanted to get a shot. There you go. You got to shoot this as that's a That's typically, angle. yeah. Yeah, that's how I look at it. But, uh, but I hadn't used it in years before that. Yeah. Since Feel motherfucking good. geometry or some like shit. Old dead stock sneakers. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna kill him with fucking obtuses today. Until your fucking soul fall off. Oh yeah. <laughs> Shout out to West Manchild. His, his soul fell off in the world. Oh shit. He had to get back to the crib. <laughs> with, with the flip flop. Yeah, he had to play the shit off. I caught with some O fives on his feet. And them shits is 14 years old. Showing the <laughs> age. Ah, shit ah. separated. Mm. Like. Fucking Germany. Better wear them out <laughs> before they rust out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't care nothing. I don't do sneakers like that. I don't. I don't be saving them and shit. I wear my shits. I save much. I'm a fucking hoarder. You know that. I yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I know I'm a hoarder, dude. I got. I'm a digital hoarder too. Dude. I got 928 videos saved to my YouTube watch later. <laughs> I got 928 of them motherfuckers, and right. I can't, it's hard for me to you delete got an email shit. list. It's ridiculous. <laughs> unread email list of I get watch through latest. it. Yeah, I get through it a little bit. I be forgetting to delete the ones I got through, so I might not be at a true 928. They don't, but, go, they don't, they don't lower the count when you watch it? No, that, that, you would think it would be that. No, they don't do that, man. Come on, y'all. Come on, Google. Google on some other shit right now. You fuck with Mojave? What's that? 
it's the uh, operating system. One of the operating No, no, I ain't on Mojave. I be scared to switch. You know what I'm saying? When you be in yeah. the middle of some projects and shit. Uh-huh. You're like, yeah, you want to go to Mojave? Nah, do not, it. not today. I wouldn't do it. Oh, I'm Mojave. Gonna, I'm going to do this shit when I got some time. Yeah. Don't do it. That shit is too intrusive. Wow, what happened? They want too much. They want to be involved. You know what I mean? They want it when, like, so now for all, forever, you have your email, you know, your little, uh, your inbox. Mm -hmm. You get your Gmail shit. It's always seamless. They ain't really want to fuck too much with Gmail. And I think this might be a Google thing, but ever since I moved up to Mojave, they like, yo, we need you to sign in and give us, uh, Permission to do all on your computer? Shit. Yeah, it's no. like it's a whole thing. Like they want they Ooh, want Google? permission to yeah, I think it's Google or not, you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm talking about? You haven't moved up? Yeah, it's, you know, it's looking to one of our technicians in the room. But uh yeah, man, they they want to get all in your shit. And it's killing me because that's typically where I use my email. Now so, I gotta go back to Gmail to keep it. So wait, wait, so you you sending your Gmail to your mail server, to your yeah. mail program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't so, fuck with that. You don't do that? Mm -mm. Oh, you just keep it Gmail? Mm -hmm. I go to Gmail for Gmail. I keep my shit for my shit. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I ain't mad at you. I'm, I'm, I'm living that life now, but it's tough. Well, I'm, I'm slowly trying to just separate myself from all this shit. I, I, I need to be. I need to become one of them old school niggas with an assistant. Flip me. phone? Oh, you the assistant. It's just, just like, I don't really want to fuck with this shit. Like, you know what I mean? I, uh, no, cause when you get when you in a creative zone and then an email come through and shit, you got fuck with it. Right. That's a whole another world. That's a whole another frequency. That's a whole <laughs> another galaxy. It's a whole like, different record. Like God damn, I got to go back to the realm. I you thought know? you didn't do that though. I thought your whole shit. Was... I don't. But you know what I'm saying. But I'm not fully. You know what I'm saying. Emancipated. Okay. And I don't have it coming to my phone. I actually added. I started a new email and, and added it to my phone for like a special for certain accounts. You know what I'm saying? That that shit come to my phone. It, no notifications, mm -hmm. but when I know that's active, I could you know what I'm saying get real quick access to it. But I just you know what I mean. The distractions, you know what I'm saying? The distractions be you know you could feel yourself getting in the zone like yeah shit I'm about to get this shit cracking, mm -hmm. and then one thing pop on your phone. 30 minutes later, mm -hmm. you know, check your email, then, you know what I'm saying, oh, I missed calls, mm -hmm. and went scroll through the ground, oh. you know what I'm saying? And then you you fucking had to snap yourself, like, hold the fuck, let me put right. this shit down and get back to it. What was I doing? Yeah, and fuck it up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and now that I'm writing and shit like that, trying to do some real creative shit that I really haven't ever done. Right. Them distractions kill you, dog. About a good airplane mode. I fuck with a good airplane mode. I fuck mode. with that, too. I fuck with an airplane mode. Fuck that. Go all the way out. You get off the get grid on them. Get you, off the grid on them. your wife called you 10 times. Where the yeah. fuck was you at? No, I was on the airplane. Why are you in the airplane mode? I'm trying to write. Right. Where you at? Well, you I'm do at that. my desk. Who you with? I'm by myself. <laughs> you do the disclaimer call. What's you say, that? hey, listen. Are we, I'm just checking in with you, babe. You think good? You all right? What you yeah, doing? Ha, ha, ha. You know I'm about to go ahead and lock in on my two hours because I'm trying to buy this new house off this motherfucking film. So I'm going to lock in for my normal no, one to no three. Doubt, no doubt. I'm going to go airplane mode, so I'm going to be silent. But that's giving you got a good regimen, a good, you know what I'm saying? My creative shit, man. I go, it might pop on at three in the afternoon. Right. It might pop on at seven in the morning, and then you be you try to zone, mm -hmm. and you know you got you know I got autonomy to to get in my zone, but I let other shit distract me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I let that I let it happen. You know what I'm saying? Cause mm -hmm. be looking for the money. Oh, is that the money? Uh, right. Oh, that's the money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I got to get into that. I be doing too much sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I had to I had to um. Retrain myself. I'm, I'm trying to be a new motherfucker, man. That's what Quincy say, right? They say uh, when the money come in, that's when the magic go out the room. <laughs> you heard that shit? Nah. Yeah, I think that's what he said. When the money come in, the, you know, the shit, the magic, because now everybody want the paper. Right. Everybody like, uh oh, well, what the, what's the right. check writer looking for? Exactly. Yeah. And you know, and that's yeah, you know, that's that's the that's the balance. That's the whole shit with this whole life is. Finding a balance between 
you know what I'm saying, the shit that's coming out of you and the shit that you got to do. That's why it would be so great to know what your heroes made. You'd be like, damn, that motherfucker only made that this whole time, and he was putting out all that inspiring shit. Yeah, You'd but be like, wow. Yeah, but what if they made a whole bunch? I mean, some of them did. But yeah. we already assumed that they did, is what I'm saying. So it's already like we acting as if. Going back to Eddie, right? Going back. All right. Eddie Murphy. Let's talk about it. Eddie Murphy is rich as fuck, right? Yeah. But for a very, very, very long time. Uh huh. I never associated Eddie with being rich. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And furthermore, like- From what time to what time? Explain. When just you... like, until I was all the way grown, grown. Like, you know what I'm saying? To, to shit, the Nicole Murphy era or some shit like okay. that. I think she probably made him look rich. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. But as a, as a actor, right. you know what I'm saying? Not a stand up, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? As an actor, Eddie Murphy, always made his characters bigger than him. You know what I'm saying? So when I looked at, you know what I'm saying, like when it was on Saturday Night Live and he did, you know, Buckwheat or he mm -hmm. did uh, motherfucking James Brown. Right. Right? When you looking at it, you know it's Eddie Murphy, but you don't see him no more. Like his, his whole, he fade away yeah. and then the character take over. Right. And it's like, you remember his characters. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, like Reggie Hammond, you know what I'm saying? And motherfucking Prince Hakeem. Okay. And Marcus Graham. Right. Like, right. I don't be knowing no fucking characters like that. You know what I'm saying? He's like, oh, that was Will Smith. You know what I'm saying? Nah. I'm saying, just me. Right, I'm not right, talking right. about, I'm gotcha, not talking gotcha, about gotcha, other gotcha, people. Gotcha, I'm gotcha. talking about the way that I looked at Eddie he, Murphy. Yeah. Was he embodies the character. He, his he characters, his characters took over his life more than, like, I associated him with his characters more than I associated him with him. You know okay. what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I wasn't always the the biggest stand up follower. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I watched Raw and Delirious. Them shits was funny as hell. And even in the stand ups, he turned into these characters. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew Charlie Murphy before I knew Charlie right. Murphy. I right. Before he even Charlie. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Charlie got burnt up in the fire. Right. Now that's a fire. Right. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? Roll, roll, roll. Yeah, you know what yeah. saying? I knew his dad. I knew his mama. Right. I knew all them characters and shit. You know what I'm saying? When he go in the movies, he play five, six different people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you really buy into them shits. Yeah. So I never really considered what he made uh -huh. or what he did at his crib, what right. his crib looked like. I ain't never pitching him driving a Rolls Royce. Right. None of that shit. You know what I'm saying? It didn't matter because his characters took over. And you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I think, you know, when you say what your heroes made, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you forget that your heroes even make anything. Hmm. That shit sound poignant than a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that shit sound like the end of a good ass Disney movie. You forgot your heroes made anything. You know, and, and I think that's when it's the best. Like that when you could buy into that shit. Nah, you know what I'm saying? So I mean, you know, what was your favorite Eddie Murphy movies? My favorite Eddie Murphy. Well, we gonna get to that. My first. Well, I don't know when I knew Eddie was rich, but Eddie it wasn't even rich. It was just like, Eddie was one of those guys that was like the epitome of success. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? He was popping, he was on right. par with Mike, but right. he was like a cool motherfucker. He was accessible, he was more accessible than Mike, but he was damn near just as famous, and he was as famous, and he was like- Jackson, Jordan, Tyson? Michael Jackson, oh, I'm thinking. <laughs> Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, Michael Tyson, <laughs> all of the Mikes. But he was, and what made him cool was, he always kept that uh, accessibility. He leveraged it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, he, you know, he's the one that's in the room with Mike, and he's pointing out the wild shit. Like, this looks crazy, dog. Listen, I'm not this far removed from right. the situation. Right. You know, I couldn't have went to the Grammys with Brooke Shields. Right. You know what I mean? Because I'm a different. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was different. You know? Right. right. You know. Um. So, but he also. I think the name was like he had a mansion in Bubble Hill or some shit like that. Like that was the first cat I'd heard about moving to Jersey and having like a big ass house in Jersey. It felt like there was like a pilgrimage. Everybody right. started moving over to Jersey, getting these big ass houses. But he was like the one that kind of right. planted the flag that I was familiar right. with. And see, maybe because I wasn't from around here, I didn't. Right. I missed that whole. You know right. What I, mean? I miss him having a mansion in Jersey. I just remember that. I remember the stories. Like the mansion was, you know, was the who's who. Was always these crazy right. parties. You right. know what I'm saying? Like. 
back to, to your point, maybe it wasn't even just rich. It was it was glamorous. He was a celebrity, right. but he was accessible. Like I like that he was he was a celebrity. Still, kind of felt he had his his feet somewhat planted on the ground. Mm -hmm. But he was he was pulling up in crazy cars. You I'm know sure what I'm saying? Like yeah, all of that fly I'm shit. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, everybody. He, he's legendary in the on the scene. Right. You know so what I'm that's that's what but, I'm going back to. I'm but, like. At that during that era when you're young when I was younger, right. you know what I'm saying? Because when he came on, I was younger, and you know what I'm saying you don't really understand what that sh all that shit mean. Like when they, you know, what I'm saying you know he hanging out with Daryl Strawberry and and Whitney Houston and right. shit. I, I didn't know what the fuck that meant. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I understood they was hanging out. It was probably some party shit, but you know what I'm saying? I ain't really you know you don't really put a price tag to it. You don't, right. You, don't, you know what I mean? You don't put the 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 kind of champagne to it and all how much all that shit costs it's just oh that's okay that's cool but that still wasn't more important than you know what I'm saying Prince Hakeem you know of course the work is always the work the work is the shit the work gets all the money is whatever the money is beautiful that's the you know if you want to say that's the scoreboard or if you want to say that's what keep you comfortable or whatever but at the end of the day mm -hmm. when you dead they're gonna talk about the work. They're gonna talk about what you contributed. They might some say some people. Some motherfuckers <laughs> be like, "Damn, yeah, you got with just that?" Or that's oh, when yeah, you go find me. He got that bubble. They got that house over there in Bubble Hill. Let me, you know, you know but more <laughs> often than not, the people gonna look at them because that's all you left them with. You ain't leave them no money. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you might leave them with a GoFundMe link and be like, "Oh, shit, this motherfucker wasn't even as rich as we thought." But oh, nah. you could, if you leave them the work. Even if a motherfucker, and that's the crazy shit. Shout out to Aaron Neville, for mm -hmm. uh, for example, right? So Art Neville just passed away, right? Mm -hmm. From the meters, I think they call him the funky brother, I forget. But um, immediately a lot of people thought Aaron Neville died. Right. You know what I'm saying? And hey. he, had to, he had to correct that, no, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, hey, I'm hey, still hey, here. Don't put me in the grave. Twitter right feed now. is still cracking. We <laughs> give us our privacy. I'm his little big brother, Aaron, all caps, just so y'all motherfuckers right. don't pick up the wrong shit. But a friend of mine sent me, that made me listen to art, like made me go listen to some Art Neville shit. Mm -hmm. He was with the meters, and I already fucked with the meters off some A. Marie shit. Right. But, you know, now I'm like, okay, let me look at that. Now, obviously, there are Art Neville fans that are upset that he's, He's gone because they ain't been fans, but mm -hmm. there's gonna be a bunch of new motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the only thing you could sort with if you're just a casual person, you know what I mean? Like, that's what they left, so that becomes the legacy or whatever. I'm talking all over the place, but I, you know, I think. Keep talking, yeah. man, this is a conversation. We are, what you're supposed to be absolutely. doing. Absolutely, you're right, you're right. <laughs> so back to, so yeah, so let's get back to, we talked about, we were like, yo, let's talk about what our favorite Eddie Murphy movie <laughs> slash performances are, maybe three. Mm -hmm. Um, if we go and and this is just because I hit you with this, you know, a little earlier. So this is just kind of impromptu. Uh, if we were, what's your number three? Number three, uh, boomerang. Now why? Because I I think I got I got that in my top three. I might be higher, but go ahead. No, that's fine. Go ahead. Boom, why boomerang. Is that? You know, what I'm saying it was very. I mean, it was. It was it was aspirational, you Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I mean, it was, you know what I'm saying? That was the first time you really I mean, I really kind of contemplated what a black man at a job looks right. like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a corporate advertising. That right. was that was such an exotic type of field. That wasn't something you was going to meet an advertising agent in your neighborhood in right. Miami. That wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, it was just like uh, uh, abstract ass, like oh shit, right? And then it was a black ass company, right? You know what I'm saying? It was a a, a world that you don't you hadn't seen and they mm -hmm. created, mm -hmm. and um, it's wild because you know you had the guy who who was doing the ad and he was in the edit booth editing the commercial and shit when the nipple came on and shit, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, George Holder, okay. You know what I'm saying? That's the actor's name. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh -huh. he's actually. He's way bigger than that, which is crazy because we interviewed his wife yesterday. That's the only reason I'm putting all this together. Okay, good. But <laughs> that is, so he was like a legend in dance and and then design oh, okay. and then art and mm -hmm. him and his him and his uh, wife was legends out there. So that's like a dope Easter egg. Like yeah, if you know you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And that was the thing when I looked him up. 
I would start Googling him last night. And I've seen him all the time. He was the guy in the 7-Up commercial, you know what I'm saying? Never had it, never will with the ha, ha, ha laugh and shit. I kind of remember the laugh. I got to yeah. see the face. But, you know what I'm saying? When I looked at it last night, it was like, oh, shit. They really, that was really dope what they did there. You looked but, at Boomerang last night? No, I'm talking about this, this Sprite commercial with the oh. guy from Boomerang. Okay. And I was like, oh, that was dope what they did there because as a kid, you don't, you didn't know who he was. Right. He was just the guy from the Sprite commercial, but he was like a legend. They, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they leveraged his brand to kind of do some things. But anyway, so, but you seeing these people in their roles doing their thing. You had Chris Rock down in the right. mailroom, you know what I'm saying? Right. It was, you know, yeah. it was, you know, Martin and that shit. You know, everybody yeah. worked. Everybody, yeah, everybody was getting, a lawyer. It was you know like an all-star saying? game. Yeah, then, you know what I'm saying, the parents come for dinner and shit. Like, mm -hmm. you don't really get that in black movies. It's like, you mm. know what I'm saying, your parents coming to dinner at your crib as you grown and you got successful at your job. Right. right. What other movie had that? I, None. I, I had to think about it. <laughs> it might be shit. You know what I'm saying? Might be the only movie. At that time, you know right. what I'm saying, you ain't really see that. You know what I <laughs> mean? So... I got it in my top three, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, it it it, it wasn't my favorite one. It right. wasn't the one that I laughed the most at. It was the one that uh, impacted me, but, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't my favorite one because, you know, other yeah. reasons. Right. Now, I hear you. That's probably my, it's in my top three. Well, what's your three? Well, we going to go back and forth because I'm actually two. Oh, you want two. me to do all my, my No, whole... I'm going to do my three. I think that's my three, so we got the same three. Oh, okay. What's, right, I'd say my, my two is Coming to America. Okay. Coming me to too. America. Me too. I got that as two, too. Yeah, that's my two. I was almost, as a, again, like this is kind of impromptu because as I'm thinking about it, my three, Coming to America is so fucking iconic. Yeah. It's such a like, it is... It's like one, it's like a, it's just such a hilarious movie, such a big, expansive movie in the way like, mm -hmm. production you know, wise, the production, production wise, value. the little set pieces, the dancing, all of that crazy, like you all, just in Africa the beginning, yeah, back. you know, like to even have like, if you think about it, this might have been the first movie or the first Cause I grew up in the eighties, nineties. Mm -hmm. This was like the first time you really see Africa in a positive yeah, light, no doubt. like in a in a fucking affluent light. Obviously, regal. Real Zamunda wasn't real, right? But it made you consider. It was the first Wakanda, right? Cause you exactly. <laughs> Cause you would hear, yo, you know, we were kings and queens over there, but yeah. you turn on fucking Sally Struthers, and niggas and, got you know, fucking Ethiopians, you know what I mean? Flies. Eye flies you know and know shit. What I'm yes, that's they how were, they, that's how they had us. They was out there getting to it. It was, uh, you know, it was just such a, and then it was like to, and then what I liked about it was like to be rich like that, and then come to. Fucking nobody knows shit about you. <laughs> and to have to live as just a regular motherfucker goes back to that standing online how your man was like, damn, that's when I feel regular. Right. But enjoying the fact that you regular. Like right. nobody is falling over over you and shit like that, man. It's You're like free to do whatever. That shit is almost like there's so much going on in that movie. It's a hell of a fucking movie. It's like one of the movies, the replay value on that bitch is is kind of, I can watch it at any point. Yeah, it never gets old. It can watch it at any point. Yeah. But I wanted to say this because I love Boomerang. That's why it's in my. That's why it's number three, because to the on an aspirational shit. But just on an honorable mention note, Dream Girls, motherfucking when he played James early on that shit, just later right. on, just to see him on some old other shit. Right. He destroyed that. But anyway, right, 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 what's right. your number one? What you got? My number one is Forty Eight Hours. Ooh. Wow, I know I gotta watch that again. That's Nick Nolte, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I gotta, I've gotta watch that again. But Don't talk but, to me. But it was my, it's my number one because that really broke the mold for right. me. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you know, I grew up when cable first came out, yeah. and you get a plethora of, you know what I'm saying? It was 
all white movies. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you get, you know, all your white heroes and you mm-hmm. got, you know what I'm saying? Who are the white heroes of that like time? Clint like Clint Eastwood. Harrison and, Ford, was saying? he on that? Uh, he wasn't no. one of them. Like Clint Eastwood uh-huh. was with the Dirty, Dirty Harry with the right. 357, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You had Brooke Shields and all them okay. and Molly Ringwald and right. that whole fucking crew. Yeah, uh-huh. And it was just, everything was white, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> everything, uh-huh. everything, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's entertainment, it's new. Yeah. It's like when you watch, um, Stranger Things, like that era was like the mall was new, right? Cable was new, neon was the shit, neon, you know what I'm saying? Roll up kind of khakis and right. acid wash jeans and right. shit and all that. All that shit is what you looking at on TV. Valley girls, you know how to speak Valley girl language and uh-huh, shit. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because this is dominant. Right. They, they dominated the they, culture. It was the Migos of their time. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was like you know what I'm saying? They ran <laughs> like, that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rock music, Fast Times at right. Ridgemont, High Sean Penn, and you know what I mean? All that. Right. This was that kind of movie. Right. But it was a black dude with the lead acting like a black dude and yeah. giving everybody's ass the kiss. And you know what I'm saying? He's slick as fuck, getting through it. He the hero. Yeah. Reggie Hammond talking shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The fucking, um, his, the, the, nah, that was, that was Beverly Hills Cop. Um, but, that whole, just the style of the movie is some shit you would watch and it would be no black people in it. You know what I'm saying? To watching that style of movie and Eddie Murphy is the lead when he's supposed to be a comedian, a funny guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? But he playing a lead, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, in this type of movie and it's like, yo, it fucked you up and let me know that shit, this shit, all kind of other shit is possible. You right. know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, if they could do this, Shit, anything happened, then we, you know what I'm saying? It's not that we not fucking all the way out the loop. We don't just have to make, you know, these kind of movies. You don't have to be the sidekick. Right, you don't have to be the sidekick. You don't have to just be in an all black, black situation. Right. You could could exist in this Hollywood world of action film and be regular. Like, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You could be Reggie fucking Hammond. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And while that wasn't the most entertaining, the most funny, the most all that, that revelation, you know what I'm saying, put it over the top for me. No, I believe you know what I, what I'm, I'm with that. I got to watch that again. I've heard a lot of people who have that similar take with, and I think that's testament to Eddie Murphy, right? Like he was the guy that he was mainstream as fuck, but he was still black as shit. Right. You know what I mean? And he was right. like, he was your proxy. Right. He was you know in the saying? house. He was at the spot for you. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. was like the first 48, first, first 40, 48. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? But it's like even now I'm in New York and shit, you know what I'm saying? And I go get my car out the garage or some shit. I think about the Porsche that had the money in the, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. That he had parked in the garage for all that, for that long time and shit. I ain't seen it. I yeah, ain't so seen it in a long, long time. So you mom, go get mom. the car, it's dusty as shit. Uh-huh. I mean, it's like, you know, it still sticks with me, even though it wasn't probably wasn't his most profitable. It wasn't the most flashy. It wasn't the one that everybody talks about now, but uh-huh. it was the one that broke through. And I, I, I'm that type of motherfucker. I always, I always attracted to the thing that makes the shift. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. Like it might not be the longest lasting that everybody in mainstream remembers, but it was the first, or it was the one that tipped the shit over. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. shit, it's only these shits only happen because. That shit right there happened. Wow. You know, I, and I think uh, 48 Hours was one of them kind of movies. That's what's up. That's your number one, you said? That, that was my number one Eddie That's Murphy movie. One. So you had Boomerang. What was your two? Same as yours. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Boomerang, to Coming to America, mm-hmm. 48 Hours, where, you know what I'm saying? That Boomerang slot, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Could have went to trading places, but uh, nah. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, trading places is great, though. <laughs> Same place is fucking <laughs> all that. <laughs> that shit is great. I'm gonna go number one, delirious. Oh, it's Delir- a stand up. Yeah, yeah, to go yeah, with that yeah, shit. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. my shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was- yeah, man. That was like, that was. I remember. I might have been nine when I first saw that shit. I think. And my that's, that's advanced for a nine. Yeah, yeah it was. It was. It was. Welcome so to the. It's a whole yeah, lot of cuss. It's a whole lot of this is this is dope situation. <laughs> you know Tight levels and the whole nut shit. grabbing the whole shit. <laughs> All every every curse word you could think about the motherfucker. Like just it was me, my homie Monty lived next door to me. 
mm-hmm. in the apartment right next door. We used to watch that shit. He had a VHS, and uh, we watched the fuck out of that shit so much so that we knew we knew that shit like yeah. a, like a record. You know what I mean? I th- Every line. I thought- would, yeah. I think all the kids knew every line of that, that shit. That shit was the <laughs> shit. But it was one of those, it was like how people, when they talk about party records, or they talk about Richard mm-hmm. Pryor and shit like that, it was that, that level of, uh, like, we was nine, so we knew we shouldn't be watching this shit. So you got, like, the, as funny as it was, you laughing, but then you looking at the door, you hoping his moms don't come in, you know what I mean? Ha, you know what I mean? Like, the shit was dumb funny. Uh, ice cream, man. Uh, yeah. What else is on that shit? Hit that ring, he went over the about 27 feet. Yeah. Then he got hit by a plane. <laughs> that shit, um... I mean, it was, it's fun, it's it's interesting because some of the shit, it don't, you know, it don't age well. You I know mean, what I mean? Some I, of the well, shit like is a little what? problematic. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, walk, yeah, You know yeah, what I mean? I mean I'm walking this way. Yeah, it was a little, this, this shit is super homophobic. Yeah, but, you know, which uh, is weird. It was always weird with him with that, but. Yeah. But, uh, the, listen, a lot of that shit stand, I. I said, now that's a five two weeks ago at a barbecue. Man. Now that's a five. Now that's a five. You know what I'm saying? Dude, the way he say five. And I don't think it's all delirious because I still I watch I listen to all his shit, but the he way said he fart. instead of saying fart, he says fart like right, it's F H A F A H T. That's a fart. F A W H T. That's a fart. And I like that shit just sound like, I mean, like Bill Cosby used to say like instead of mature, he would say mature. Mm-hmm. There's certain shit I just remember about motherfuckers like, right. oh, well, that's interesting. You say it like that, but he was right. like, that's a fart, and it's just man. The fucking, just the attitude of the shit, just how cool he was, how young he was, how fun, he knew mm-hmm. he was funny, how he transformed into all these little characters and shit, how he just hold that stage. Right. That shit was the coolest shit. That was back when little, you, you, like the texturizer game was still hot in the streets. It wasn't all the way full Jerry Curl, but he had a little Luther Vandross texturizer. With a, with a little tail in the back <laughs> of some shit. With a little twist in it. Yeah, it was a little crazy. <laughs> with some fresh, fresh red tight, leather. Tight ass leather. Looking crazy. But he didn't look stupid. You know, like, you could wear all of that shit and look foolish as fuck. Right. He- he killed it to where people was like, I think I might have to try some of this shit. You've seen so many people. He, he was flipping. a hybrid. He was a hybrid. He came through at a time where the times were changing. Mm-hmm. And he was busting through in, like, I always call it the disco era. He was busting through the disco right. era. But then hip hop was picking up. So he had the attitude. Yeah. But he had the clothes of the disco right. era. You know what I'm saying? But because he had that attitude, it made everybody else look old. You right. know what I'm saying? It right. was like LL coming out the run DMC. Yeah. Like he made yeah. them look old. He made Rich look like a, a old Yeah, man. Rich like turned into a father. senior citizen immediately. Yeah, he you know what I'm saying? Even though he was still funny as shit, right. but he was an old guy. He was just disconnected. Poor Red Fox. Red slacks. Fox became senior citizen. Yo, he was, with the thing about Red, I just saw some sand for the sun like maybe a week ago. Mm-hmm. That shit is funny. Yeah, yeah, he hell. was still funny. <laughs> he was funny in a mother. But he was like, there's a part where you like on your way to being old, where people feel like people look at you like you older than you really are, right. like because you're on your way to being old. But when you settled into old, right? Like when, when I was growing up, Red Fox was an old man. Right, he was already so he was just, old. Yeah, he was. <laughs> I never seen him young, so I only know it's like Morgan Freeman. Right, you know what I mean? I never seen young Morgan Freeman, so I see him as an old guy. He's established. That's his. That's his shit. Whereas. I saw Richard as older than Eddie, and I knew Rich was the man. Everybody was like, he's super funny, but I just saw him as like somebody's father. You know what right. I mean? He had the slacks on, he had the, you know what I mean? Yeah, that he, type was, of shit. he was old school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say though? We were talking about, what about that? We were talking about, oh, speaking of you saying how he came across, he said in the Comedians and Cars, he said who he really looked up to, I guess kind of who he would like try to channel the three people he was really into, it was uh, it was Bruce Lee, um, Elvis, and I think it was Bruce Lee, Elvis, and Evil Knievel. And it was that just sounded like, all about right. It sounded this is exactly what it was. That was, that was then, who uh, was cracking. That was who uh, was popping. <laughs> that was the zeitgeist. They had, they had the 
the control of the audience. Yeah, they were the ones. You know what I'm saying? They Elvis, were... Bruce Lee, and Evil Knievel? Yeah, I think that the Evil Knievel thing might be off because I know then he said, because then Seinfeld was like, yeah, they all fearless. Because Seinfeld was like, you were fearless. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't feel fearless. He was like, nah, you were fearless, trust me. And, um, and it was so interesting because they got such respect for each other. They so tied, like, mm -hmm. different lanes. But uh, you should watch it. It was really interesting. I'm going but to then watch he it. says, um, he said Tracy Morgan has said that uh, Eddie Mur that he was Eddie Murphy. I think he said Eddie Murphy, Evil Knievel, and I forget who else. But I know, like when I would, I never did it three people. But I always, like, I was always inspired by Eddie and Big Daddy Kane. They was like the coolest motherfuckers when I was growing. I was like, though these niggas right here, they got this shit figured out. Right. But uh, that's that. So yeah, number one, I'm going delirious. Number two, coming to America. Wow. Three, boomerang, honorable mention, dream girls. You got an honorable mention. Trading places. Trading places. Mm. Word up. Hey, what's up, man? Word. We did a little something. Yeah, we got we a segment. Did something. <laughs> <laughs> what are we calling that segment? <laughs> we call it the Daddy Murphy talk. I don't know. We know. We know. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, we need a like a Story producer here at the conversation. If you like a young cat, or a young woman, young somebody, not even young. If you got, uh, if you listen to this shit and you like, yo, I think I want, I think I could, uh, I could galvanize some of this shit. I could, you know what I mean? I could pitch some stories. If you got some stories you want to pitch, you think you want to come over here and, and, and work with the crew, you know what I'm saying? Uh, reach out to In The Conversation. You can, uh, Hit us in, on social media, or you could uh, email me at uh, beatsbeingbroke at gmail.com. We are looking for a story producer and in the conversation. Right on. You know what I mean? So right if you're right. interested, you want to fuck with us, we'll, you know, holler at us. No doubt. There you go. Uh, what else, man? Anything? I mean, I, I think it's, I think um, this hot girl summer thing is very interesting. It's definitely very interesting. Because you know, is you know, it, it has definitely turned up the social media mm -hmm. in a way. that's an energy. Yeah. This year, this you know, you know, I pay attention to the seasons. Yeah. And usually, the summer brings extra things to the season. Like but, what? No, I'm just saying, this year, uh -huh. it has just you know, everybody's a little bit more uh, confident in their their you know, what I'm saying their 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 uh, exploits of the summer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? As far as, you know, on the girl side of the thing, women's side of the mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I'm saying more beaches, more, you know what I'm saying? More more pools, more mm -hmm. fuck it, I'm out. Right. More um uninhibited. Uninhibited. More, you know what I'm saying? People who would just be normally casual and cool right. on the shit, the bum bum. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Out there having it, living right. life. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. think it's an inspiration. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um the the biggest inspiration of it all was that uh, -uh. uh Meg actually filed for a trademark on that shit. Hot Girl Summer? Yeah. I, I like, I like <laughs> these you know savvy rap motherfuckers. I see Cardi get the occur, that shit was, mm -hmm. she was like, hold on, y'all gotta run me some paper if y'all gonna keep using that. Right. Meg the Stallion, they see what's going on, they see the uh, intellectual yeah, property. Yeah, cause, cause Wendy, Wendy's tweeted oh. out the other day, last week I yeah. think, you know what I'm saying? That day lemonade was the official drink of Hot Girl Summer. Wow. And then somebody was in the comments like, oh, y'all need to run me her check. Get a check. I guess she saw that. And I think yesterday filed for the uh, trademark for That's Hot Girl dope. Summer, which is dope because like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like motherfucking um, fucking Paris Hilton owns It's Hot. Right. That's hot. That's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Remember yeah. that was like the hood vernacular. Right, right. That's right. hot, boy. Oh, shit. That's hot. You know, on the low, Kim Kardashian owns kimono, but, uh, you know, the people don't want her to fuck it. What's kimono? Kim you know what a kimono is. So right. she- uh, She owns the word kimono. She trademarked the word kimono. People got in the ass because it was yeah, traditional. That's a, that's a Japanese. Like, she like, was like, yo, nobody else trademarked it. <laughs> what the fuck is a Japanese? <laughs> that shit is hilarious. Right, so that's like- <laughs> Sit your ass down. <laughs> that shit is why I was like, yo, hey, it's enterprising. It's unfortunate because it's appropriation. So that's <laughs> unfortunate. But I see the enterprising spirit out here in right. this world. You right. know, motherfuckers is, you know, they but say you, it, they want you, it. You like to see it 
go to the motherfucker who made it. You know what I'm saying? Of like, course. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when when on fleek went crazy, and you know yeah. what I'm saying? The girl made that shit up, ain't getting nothing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? She get a shout out every now and then. Yeah, she get a little, social you know, media. And social media fame and shit. She goes down in, in the At zeitgeist. At this point, we should know her name so we can cite her, like, you know, like exactly. a civil but, rights Exactly, you know what I'm saying? If she would have trademarked that shit, she would have. Maybe it should be a, somebody who just do that shit. Like, Call you know it On Fleek Day, where we celebrate the, yeah, the great give, give her, whatever her give name her is. Give her the day. Yeah, give whatever, what, On Fleek. If you are the woman that created On Fleek, hit us in the comments. Let us know your first and last name, and we're going to go ahead and get at least a, a, you know, some type of trophy made. On Fleek. We got to give, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trophies on fleek. Yeah, so you got to, you know, get credit where it's due. Yeah, but go ahead, so. That Hot Girl Summer shit is, is taking off. It yeah. don't have no signs of dying. Mm -mm. You know, you got the, you know, you know, everybody out there doing it. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Right. I love what's going on. I love the energy out there uh -huh. with what's happening in the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know what I'm saying, you got that shit that Hot Girl Summer going wrong. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> nah, nah, you seen uh, this video of these motherfuckers on the plane? And it's a, it's, you can't see them at first. You just see a. a, a oh, they was fucking on the plane. No, they was fighting. No, not fucking. They oh, was, I seen. Was them. Okay. I guess they was going on vacation to come I home. Seen that too. Okay. <laughs> Damn. You ain't see that video? They <laughs> nah, was fucking. They was in the cheap seats, right by that one seat, right before the bathroom, which is the worst. That's the most indiscreet seat to be trying to fucking, because mm. everybody just gonna be standing there waiting. There. They were going for it. But anyway, go ahead. This was a while back. Anyway, the, the video comes in and you just hear a voice. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, da, 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 you know what I'm saying? You, you ain't gonna be out here fucking looking at women and shit and da, 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 da. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she just cussing the motherfucker out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Call them all kind of niggas and shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then, um, and then so you know, the stewardess, you know, the, what, uh, flight attendants mm -hmm. come in, uh, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, you got a kid behind you. He's like, I see that motherfucker, I see that kid. Uh -huh. That done consumed kid. What myself. are you seeing on the camera? Now you just hear shit? You, you, the, the shit, what you see now. In the main part of the screen, you see a, a white dude with his earbuds on, looking like uh, like he don't hear it, but he hear it. He, he got his he, shit on pause. He got it on pause, listening to the shit, and then right next to him is a black dude uh -huh. who it turns out is Russell Westbrook's brother. Oh wow! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he looked like him. Nah, he chubby. Okay. Like, you know what I'm okay. It, it, but everybody said that's Russell Westbrook's okay, brother because yeah. he tweeted out after that video went out. He tweeted, you know what I'm saying? The one time that I didn't get a first class seat. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then so everybody chimed in on his shit. So uh -huh. it, it turns out that was Russell Westbrook brother. Uh -huh. So it's these two dudes sitting in the row in front of him, like right. looking like, oh shit, what the fuck going on? Right. And then she spazzes, like, you know what I'm saying? She spazzed out on the um, flight attendant. She's like, you know, I see that kid back there. I consume kids of my own. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know, you know what I'm saying? If you don't say shit, I ain't gonna say shit. Uh -huh. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> and then so the um the flight attendant was telling the dude, well, you, you got to just come on out of there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then he was like, all right. So he started getting, he was like, oh, you going to get up? You coming out? Uh -huh. no, don't you ever come to my house? I'm going to go. Then she swung on him. Bam. You know can you see this at boy, this point or no? Yeah, you can start. You, you seeing him through the seat. Okay. So she swung on him. Bam. And then, you know what I'm saying? Everybody like, oh. Damn. And then, um. Motherfucker get up out of there, he's like, you assaulted me. You know, he threw them legal words yeah, out there. Yeah. Oh, I'm assaulting you? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, she's fast. Then he, he get out to go up to the front. Uh -huh. She go right after him. I'm assaulting you? Blah! Oh. Everybody like, ah! <laughs> this shit is wow. How she look? Small? <laughs> she heavy handed. Okay. Heavy handed. Young, older, what we talking? Youngish okay. Latino woman. Okay. You know what How saying? was what's the victim looking like? He looking like a chubby looking like they, you know what I'm saying? Couple. Couple going to Miami uh, or coming from Miami or some shit yeah. like that. Victimized. Chubby, you know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. can't really he moved pretty quick, so I ain't really catch his face. Mm-hmm. But uh, he was getting abused and he was like, You assaulted me. Mm -hmm. And then you 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 see how it played out. It's like Ma'am, you're gonna get arrested for assault. That's what the, right. the male flight attendant was like. You're gonna get arrested for assault. Mm -hmm. So she was like, "If that's gonna happen, let me let me put some grease on exactly. it." Exactly. She ran behind him. Blow. There's a lot of speaking of assault. There's a lot of pop up uh, fades going on. A lot of people just fighting in these streets. Like, it's hot. 
I guess so. It, like, it's what shit. you gonna do? It's you like see, you see the video of Future's bodyguard getting sn- like swung on from nah, behind. Uh-uh. Somebody dropped Why Future's swung, bodyguard. I don't know. All you was said Future out of with context, him? Future wasn't with him after that. Bro, he, Future <laughs> kept moving. It was Future. If Future was with him at the time, and then Future. Got- well, when I seen the video, Future's bodyguard is walking in one direction. This cat comes from behind him. Wow! You know, he still on him. He drop him. He sleeps him. Oh, he sleeps him. Yeah, but he he it was a He's, sucker punch. He caught him from behind. Yeah, but future, his jaw. Nice future is his security is breached. Yeah, so future you get kept the, moving you get, as get, if his security was breached. So the guy's like, "Yo, that's future's bodyguard. Look at him with his smile. Look at the eye here on the floor. Look at this nigga future over here." Future's like, "Yo, know, future ain't even trying to be in that video. Future is in the future because he don't you know he mean? don't know what this is. He no. thinking this shit is a full on assault. I'm not mad at him for doing no, that. You shit. You got to keep it moving. And then with the old ASAP Rocky shit, you know, like nowadays you shit, you know, motherfuckers. This was in the UK." Oh, so, it's in the UK. You know, the so, yeah, abroad shit. Do. Yeah. They just trying to get back home. Yeah, you trying to get up out of there. Especially when they snuff your security and he laid out sleep. <laughs> That's effective. It's time to go. Yeah. It's time to go, go. That was the defense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Somebody snatching your gun. Oh, shit. He was like, all right, well, fair enough. Y'all, you, you, you got this round. You know what I'm saying? You got to get up out of there. Like back to that the time States. when they robbed two chains and shit. Right out in Oakland or whatever. Yeah, it's like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at nothing he did. He had to get the pup, get up out of there, man. He ain't got time to be brain wrestling and, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> with wrestling. these fools. <laughs> so there was another one. I seen another little, uh, <clears throat> little pop off. Bunch of pop offs. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you saw the Disney fight a couple weeks ago. That That's, was some that bullshit. Was, that was some weird shit because. Actually, that was a family fighting each other. Each other. I actually got sucked into it where I read the comments because I was trying to figure out what was going on. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it looked like too much of back and forth and then it seemed like this girl was on this side at right. first and then ended up getting beat up. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. Man, you know what that shit was? I kind of know, like, the girlfriend, you know. I, I It was some bullshit overall, right. but it was like a family fighting within. Right. It was, it was, it was a girl, dude the, fighting his sister first. Right, because he, he didn't like the he didn't like her boyfriend. I don't know what the reasoning. I okay. it, when I read it, it was new, hey, so somebody just broke it down. Right. So he he was fighting his sister. Right. The mama pulled the okie doke. See, the mama, she she fell out on purpose to try to cause oh, a yeah, distraction. Yeah, yeah. She did the let's get the insurance money for. Her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but she wanted everybody to stop. So she okay. she she you know what I'm saying that was her thing. She was gonna fall the fuck right, out. Right. So she fell out. Oh, do 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 do. And then nothing happened. They right. kept on wilding out. That is the mama fall laughter. Oh! You know what I'm saying? So, so then, so then the other sister grabbed the mama, and then his girlfriend was holding up the mama. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The mama was still, like, you know, faking with the faint shit. Uh-huh, and, uh-huh, then, yeah. uh-huh. and then he thought that his after, girlfriend. Oh, go ahead. After it was over, uh-huh. his sister, uh-huh. his other sister who was holding up the mama, was uh-huh. like. Well, what about this bitch? She made, she hit mama and made her right. fall. Right, and then he, yeah. And then he went wild and swinging her like savagely. Right. But he, his fight game was so he weak. He was a sucker. He was a sucker. Then motherfucker. Big for nothing ass. Big, big for nothing. Everybody around there is, is fucking crazy. That little white guy that slept him, put slept him, him real quick. Fucking sleeper was. He came out of there like a first responder. Yeah. He did it. But yeah, then, he's, go ahead, go ahead. What well, was that? That so the motherfucker funny. said the mama, he, she hit the girlfriend, hit the mama. Yeah. I watched that shit about she 10 didn't do times. That, like, she tried the to help mama, the mother. The mama fell out on her motherfucking yeah. own to try to distract y'all stupid ass kids from fighting. Yeah. yeah like, pay shit, attention man. to me and stop it, but that shit didn't work. It was crazy. I saw another fight out in Times Square. It was one guy in some slacks fighting another motherfucker in some sneakers. And you could tell. Who won? Oh, yeah. Sneakers put slacks, put slack, mm-hmm. folded them. Okay. You could tell Slacks didn't really want it. You know what I mean? He was just trying to save face, mm-hmm. but he wasn't guarding his grill. So he was he was like, he threw a punch, and he was just, you know, like kind of just, I'm here. Mm-hmm. I'm not no sucker. And homie, you could tell he was he was nice with his hands. He was, wow. he, so he was, you know, when the motherfucker nice, they got that patience right. of a nice fighter where they right. just, they'll sit there and wait for you to do the wrong thing and then right. put you down. Right. And they put that motherfucker down. He put him down like he knocked him out on some old uh, Damian Lillard. Remember when Damian Lillard just hit the car? Right. And knew it was going in? Ah. Yeah, it was terrible. 
Yeah. It was terrible. It's not what you want. Yeah. But I had an Especially uncle. in the heat wave. I had an uncle named BB who always wore snacks and wingtip shoes and shit uh-huh. like that. But he had hands and shit. Yeah. That's what I thought it was going, but it didn't go that way. No, no, so no, no, no. Not, he, he'd yeah. be out there in the middle of the streets in Brown Sub, mm-hmm. whipping, on, whipping on a motherfucker in some slacks and some wingtips. And, you know, he's just sliding. Just and a long. Striking. He, he's like one of them long fighters, like, you know what I'm saying, that, that know how to move and yeah. hit you with a long ass jab yeah. and jab your ass to death yeah. to where you're just upset. Yeah. Every time you run in to get something, you get hot, hit yeah. in the nose. Bah! <laughs> bah, bah, yeah, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Thousand little bitty strikes. Right. And he wasn't no big, you know what I'm saying? No brawling. haymakers. Nah, it's just. Uh, gonna like, dot that eye a few bow. times. Yeah. <laughs> bow, bow. Yeah. And then, you know what I'm saying? Sting. Just embarrass your ass in front of everybody. Now you're out of composure. Yeah. That, that was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that was some, some interesting shit as a kid to watch. Oh, yeah. That's the best. Because you, you don't associate wingtip shoes and slacks, nah. tailor made slacks, and. In a good street brawl. Yeah. Either either you're gonna get knocked out or you're gonna dominate to the point where right. it's like, wow, this guy here. Right. Stacy Adams need to holler at him because he just doubt. did some some high level performance shit. Exactly. Anyway, uh, what you gonna do this week, man? You got the rest of the week. Where you gonna be? Man, I'm um headed to somewhere, Georgia, for my wife's family reunion. Oh. Um, I forget the town. Some some little camp town. Okay. Shit. Camp town? It's not a camp, but it's like some type of little situation. It's campish. Okay. Can't be. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Y'all camping or no? No. It's, sh- my wife ain't going to never be no camp. <laughs> <laughs> ain't getting no yurt? <laughs> no. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be it's supposed to, these cabins. They, they went there a couple years ago, I guess. Mm-hmm. So it's supposed to be legit. All right. I, I've never been. So I'm going this year. So we, we headed out shit tomorrow, actually. Well, that's what's up. That's what's up. I'm going to be at New York Comedy Club this Thursday night, 8 o'clock show. I might be at Eastville this weekend. Stay tuned to the uh, DamianLemon.com. I'll, I'll put it up if I am. Um, shit. Beyond that, I'll be back here next week. So until then, tell a friend to tell a friend. And even the enemy. To get in the conversation. Yes, sir. We are out. to be in the conversation. conversation.